you are now seeing a disturbing surge of infections. The person feels like they don't need to wear a mask. I don't think that they should be forced to wear a mask. We're doing so well after the plague. It's going away. The country's top doctor is preparing the U.S. for a COVID-19 resurgence. You are now seeing a disturbing surge of infections. This fall and winter is going to be difficult, and we need to be prepared for it. Dr. Anthony Fauci and CDC Director Robert Redfield warning Congress about a troubling trend with coronavirus hospitalizations on the rise in 21 states. The next couple of weeks are going to be critical in our ability to address those surgings that we're seeing in Florida, in Texas, in Arizona, and in other states. We are still in the middle of a serious outbreak. There's no doubt about that. In one part of Washington state, hospitals are filling up. ICU beds now nearing capacity. In Texas, authorities reporting more than 5,000 new cases in 24 hours. The safest place for you is at your home. And in Florida, the governor is blaming overcrowded bars and restaurants for the state's recent uptick. If you go in and it's just like mayhem, like Dance Party USA, and it's packed to the rafters, uh, that's just cut and dry, and that's not just an innocent mistake. It comes as Major League Baseball finally reaches a new agreement for a 60-game season, hoping to play ball starting July 23rd. But as more of the U.S. reopens, a stark message from the European Union, which is now considering a ban on travel from the U.S. due to the spread of the virus here. Primary election results in New York City are showing what could be a big upset for one of the most powerful Democrats on Capitol Hill. Veteran Congressman Elliot Engel is chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. But early results show him trailing his progressive challenger, Jamal Bowman, who was endorsed by Senator Bernie Sanders and Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Voters also went to the polls in Kentucky, where some people pounded on the windows of a polling station after it closed. They waited in line for hours outside the Kentucky Expo Center, which was the only polling site in Louisville, a city of 600,000 people. Dozens were left outside when it closed. A judge then extended voting hours by 30 minutes. The Justice Department under fire, accused of giving a more lenient sentence to Roger Stone. President Trump's longtime friend who was convicted of lying to Congress. Roger, what's the message you want to send to the committee today? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Aaron Zelensky, a prosecutor who worked on the Stone case, is set to testify on Capitol Hill today. In his prepared remarks obtained by ABC News, Zelensky will tell lawmakers he saw favorable treatment for Stone with his own eyes. And quote, I was told that the acting U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, Timothy Shea, was receiving heavy pressure from the highest levels of the Department of Justice to cut Stone a break. Zelensky adding that he was told that Shea was afraid of the president. In response, the Justice Department issued a statement saying, Mr. Zelensky's allegations concerning the U.S. attorney's motivations are based on his own interpretation of events and hearsay, at best, not firsthand knowledge. Zelensky and his team recommended that Stone receive between seven and nine years in prison. But following tweets from President Trump describing the recommendations as a miscarriage of justice, Attorney General William Barr stepped in, reversing the team's recommendation. Stone was ultimately sentenced to three years. President Trump hitting the campaign trail, addressing a crowd of thousands in Phoenix, claiming the country is through the worst of the pandemic. We're doing so well after the plague. It's going away. The president once again referencing the virus with a racial slur. It's got all different names. Wuhan. Now Wuhan was catching on. Coronavirus, right? Kung flu, yeah. That eruption of cheers coming from a jam-packed room with no social distancing and with few exceptions, no masks. The person feels like they don't need to wear a mask. I don't think that they should be forced to wear a mask. With Arizona now facing a record number of cases, one doctor is condemning the rally, calling it a super spreader event. Mass gathering at this time is not safe. Arizona is one of more than a dozen states struggling to keep up with a surge of patients. A Louisville police officer has been fired for his role in the death of Breonna Taylor back in March. Brett Hankson was among the officers who opened fire in Taylor's apartment during an overnight drug raid using a no-knock warrant. Taylor, a black EMT, was shot eight times. No drugs were ever found. So far, no charges have been filed in that case. 
Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z. A new fire to talk about in Arizona. This one's in Phoenix proper on the north side of town. It's called the Aquila Fire, and there you go. That's obviously a home burning. So now we know that some have been destroyed, some structures too. At least 200 homes have been evacuated. This is not a huge fire yet, nearly 900 acres, but 0% contained. They said it was windy already, and they're, as they're trying to fight that fire, that is only going to be uh, more of a problem as we go toward the end of the week. So let me explain. It's hot, right? We know that 111 Phoenix today, 110 Yuma, all the way up to nearly Oregon. We're seeing those heat advisories, Bakersfield 103. That ridge that's been in place that's keeping us so hot, the core of the heat still hanging out. But what's going to happen is that low is going to kind of detach itself from the uh, upper level pattern. And then it's going to bring more windy conditions, especially to western Arizona and all along the Mexican border. And that would only instigate the erraticness of the fire. So we'll be watching that and the unfortunate uptick in fire behavior probably toward the end of the week.